<laughs> Good morning. We're jumping right in. It is always a privilege to have Mr. Dave Rat on the channel. Huge thanks to the whole Sound Tools crew for coming in early during an incredibly busy trade show to help shoot this video. So grab a coffee. It's an early morning in Anaheim, California. And I just asked Dave what the team has been up to since we saw them here last year. We made more stuff. <laughs> Are you filming? All right, so new finishes. I'm excited about the new finishes. Um, so the glass filled nylon box made out of the same thing as the Neutrik connectors are already made out of. And um, we've just got a whole series. What we want to do, what I want to do is 30 years ago, that's what an XLR connector looked like, right? It was heavy, it had like bits. Like if you take that out, this falls out. And there's all kinds of junk in there and kind of progressed to the old Neutrik and then it went to the, the plastic Neutrik and then it's called the way come up to a very lightweight, reliable. The reliability and complex has increased and the complexity has decreased. Same thing with the connectors, you know, the set screws get all lost. So what I'm trying to do is the same concept of having uh, folded metal, kind of sharp yeah. stage block. This is the standard and kind of do what Neutrik has done or with uh, the connectors with the stage box and make something that costs half as much. It's got the reliable re reliability, the durability, and um, it's just a good design. I mean, the way that these are built is um, much more functional. Here it's very difficult to get a circuit board unless you hand wire them into something with opposing connectors and this design is split design. So we've got a whole series of that. You guys are prototyping those again house? Yeah that's a 3D printed prototype. A 3D printed prototype we got on the new printer, the new form labs printer. Um, so hopefully later this year we'll have uh, a series of um, cat boxes. We're gonna call them snakelets quarter inch cattails. So this this whole car, like uh, for guitar players, they, you know, having the ability to run out to your pedal boards and back using um, just a single modular unit and cable and have it unplugged. So you just go out there and have this on the box, unplug it or plug it in, or have a quarter combo jacks, yeah, so you can have the quarter inches plug in. We'll do a balanced as well. This is unbalanced just for the, I think that there'd be a lot of usefulness for the guitar players and guitar techs traveling. Oh yeah, the eight channel box. Yeah, this is cool. We're just uh, uh, an in and an out. And then this has got a, two boards in there. So there's one for this box and this, and there's a ribbon that goes between. So you can actually unplug that ribbon and use this as a female box and a male box independent. Okay. Or you could have one with eight. Uh, so just having this uh, scalable modular design, and then all the circuit boards transition between everything that we make. We can build this with uh, double females and have a double cat box um, with eight channels on there. NL4, so the NL4, we've, we've rebuilt it. We've got the um, indicators a little bit. We did the a, a little bit with the circuitry. Um, we made it um, field serviceable now. So before there was an epoxy holding it together. It, the tricky part with this product is the NL4 connector. It's got a... Um, we actually get these machined down, and now we've got it so that you can actually remove and service the connector. Uh, really getting into like, yeah, getting into field serviceability and, and um, uh, staying with the reliability angle where everything is uh, warranted for life. And so it's a. Uh, yeah, just a really cool
cool design, they feel good, everything's there. What we really need to do now is get this product up to this kind of... Um, every other product we have has got this instantaneous um, on-off, so it's every, it's all or nothing, right? It's very, very... Um, this one has got... The first product we've actually done, we keep everything real simple, that it's got a circuit board in it. So this has got a sequential. I, well, first of all, I want to have, we're going to add the, in the sequence, we're going to have an all on scenario where after it gets done with the sequence, it puts them all on so you can look for intermittents. Getting the speed of the sequence so it's right. I mean, it's pretty quick. I'm not, we'll get the LED colors. I want the, I'm so particular about every aspect. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult to get these things right. Even though it seems a simple product, getting everything exactly right is, um, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by the complex products people build because there's um, just so many variables. Uh, the boxes, you know, making the um, boxes so that they're all dimensionally related to each other is, um, and then we'll have a double wide box somewhere. Oh, yeah. And then as everything this comes out and you've got a storage box, it's, oh, cool. right, it's kind of neat. We really go through just the process of every detail from the insert. Making this was a con extremely complex and time consuming adventure to, so that the connectors would all plug in to the, you know, so, and then it wraps around. Because we're not in a hurry, really, we can pay attention to those details. I think, for me, the bigger picture is not these actual products, but perfecting the process of coming up with an idea, walking it all the way through its development to get it right. and. Once we've got that process down, we can scale up the complexity or the reach of what we're doing and add something into this infrastructure. I think that I get frustrated because things move slow. On the other hand, the purpose of it is to refine the process of producing something and not just make a bunch of junk and then solve it later. One of our toughest customers is actually the rat shop. You know, we'll make, we'll make we made this, uh, we make these cables for years and finally rats like, we're having problems with these other cables, they're wearing out. The jack is, well, it's because we're using PVC cables. You've, I've been, we've been making something that'll solve this problem in house, but selling it to the other departments without forcing them to do it. Not, hey, you need to use this. It's like the demand is there. The, learning that they actually need, or them learning they actually need the stuff that we've been making that solves their problem between the two different sides of rat. These weren't here, I don't believe, which is the, because the blue cable's got the separate ground wire, like a standard audio cable for each of the pairs, we can um, terminate it like a standard wire. So this is terminated like a set of audio tails. It's got the, um, braided nylon cover jacketing over it. It's shrunk, these are like really durable, but on the other hand, it terminates to a um, Ethercon. So you can take the old set of tails and terminate, now you got a cable. And then these with a Neutrik uh, female to female, you can extend this or attach it to a cable. And the cost of this with the adapter is lower than the cost of this because we're not dealing with the machined housing and they're lightweight and reliable so built using building a um, designing a cable that's got all of the assets of a pro audio cable and the specifications of a cat 6a type it's a cat 5 rated because of the specifications of cat 6 um, 
the mechanical specifications, but as far as the electrical specifications, this will uh, uh, meet, meet all the Cat 6s. Um, you know, I built a new thumper plate. I've got a new one here that's got a um, differential drive. Uh, it's still in prototype. This went out with a band for a while. It's um, still in development. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything other than just play with it. Like most of my bigger projects, I kind of um, come up with an idea and then decide what I'm going to do with it later. I've got these plates. I didn't have these last year. These are actually vibrating plates. Um, I can play that. Stand on this. <laughs> we, I did them for a hearing impaired riser at Coachella last year. Oh, cool, cool. And, um, That's a really cool one. Yeah, they've got some, they've got some applications for, um, for hearing impaired or a bass player that's playing where there's not a lot of low end, where you don't have a lot of uh, ability to have a high volume level. Yeah. Uh, DJs having one under each foot in stereo, being able to sing. Also even trade show, just the ability to stand on something and hear full range tactile music. And they, yeah, it's, it's, it's surprisingly strong, right? It's, yeah, no, it's surprising. You want to try this, try the VR thing? Yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. Okay.